Welcome, everyone. It is Crab Cakes and Baseball. I am Jerry Shank, your host, and with me, as always, we've got our Maryland Delaware Scouting Director, Jamie Nail. Jamie, how are we doing? Doing great, Jerry. Uh, loving life, going through it, uh, going down the home stretch of these preseason events. Yeah, it's going to be real exciting, and uh, also exciting is we're trying something new. We're trying a different, uh, different podcast uh, type right here. Um, so you're going to be going to be rolling with the punches here. Cause we're going to be doing it, doing a little bit more live live shows right now. So, um, we're very excited for, for this transition. Um, so please, uh, give us your feedback as you see these, these things going across, but we got a very, very busy schedule that we're going to talk about today. Um, really good last weekend. Um, we had what we're going to go, we're going to be going over three events, that we went over this past weekend. You had the uh, Wow Factor Scout Day on Saturday morning, and then we had the Maryland Preseason All State, Montgomery County, and then we had the on Sunday the nightcap was the Maryland Preseason All State Session Two. Really, really loaded with talent, Jamie. I'm very excited to get into this. So, let's get started. A um, couple items of business that we want to talk on. Um, just a reminder to all, uh, scout days. We did a scout day this weekend. Scout days are out. Um, we have them throughout the year. We offer them for any organization that's interested. Um, please, if you have any questions, you can definitely email myself. You can email Jamie Nail. Um, it's a great way to help add an extra tool into the toolbox for, um, your organization promotion. So be sure to talk about that or be sure to uh, contact us if that's something that you are interested in. Um, also, another thing that I want to get into before we get uh, too hot into this is we're going to be having another release here in the next few days, and we're going to be talking about the PBR or Prep Baseball, excuse me, Prep Baseball Future Games, and some of the big changes. Uh, if you saw on our website, they have changed the event. We're going to be adding uh, the a 17U division, so for this year, it'd be 2025 grads. The, obviously, we will have our traditional 16U division, which will be the 2026 class. And then we will also um, still be having part of it of our rising freshman class. So I guess it'll be the 2028 class. We'll be forming teams from every team. Big news, though, that I do want to mention is our 16U bracket, the kind of the main meat and potatoes of the future games. We will have an all Maryland Delaware team, um, as opposed if you're used to it, if you've seen it in the past, we've had the Mid Atlantic roster where we've been Maryland, Virginia, and Delaware. Um, Virginia is going to be having their own team, and now Maryland and Delaware are going to be having their own team. Jamie, I know this was kind of off script, throwing it to you, but I know you got to be excited about it, being able to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, that that definitely fires me up. Um, you know, the Mid Atlantic team is is always great and it's always a lot of fun. But but now I get my own guys, my my own Maryland, my own Delaware guys, um, and and we get to form a team between those two states. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It it opens up a lot more opportunities for for guys across the state. Um, so yeah, like I said, fires me up. I'm competitive about it. So uh, for me to know that it's just my Maryland Delaware guys or one team down there. Uh, playing in front of all those coaches. It, it's it's awesome. It's a great experience for them and, and great opportunity for a lot more players. Yeah. And, and like I said, just be ready for a release. We're going to get into more detail on what to ex expect, how you can qualify for this event. Um, we will have, like I said, uh, the 17 new division of 2025s will be a, will be an Atlantic mid Atlantic roster, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, uh, North Carolina, I believe as well will be included with us. Um, and then the 14 new team will be a Maryland only team as well. We'll give you all the information on how you can be a part of that event, but the future games has become the most, uh, the most important event of the summer. It's the biggest event, the biggest recruiting event of the summer. Last year was over 350 college coaches. You're talking the power five schools are bringing multiple guys to come and attend this event because it's just that big of a deal. Um, I can tell you all you want and I can, tell you all about how big it is and how many coaches are going to be at that event, but you're not going to believe it until you see it in person. So definitely um, stay tuned for the next post that we'll be having up. It'll just be a short, uh, short uh, release on, you know, ways that we can qualify or players can qualify to be part of team Maryland. Now let's get into this past weekend, Jamie, and we'll start out on Saturday morning, went down to uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland, and we had a nice little scout day with wow factor. 
Um, G's Lions uh, was down there in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Let's talk about, um, first off, you know, really impressive hitters just overall and a lot of strength. Um, 25 exit velos over 90, 90 or 90 or better with three players over 102 miles an hour just off the bat. Really impressive day offensively. So definitely something to to look forward to now that we're going to be talking about leading to our next thing is our big hitter. Um, let's start it off with uh, Hunter St. Dennis, the big right-handed hitter, infielder out of Magruder. Main commit, Jamie, had another a really impressive day. It had been a while since we had seen him, so what would you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely been a while since we've seen him in an event um, atmosphere, showcase atmosphere. Um, but I'll tell you what, the, the bat is definitely – it's certainly impressive. Uh, 6'4", 230, uh, the frame, hands work quick, 102.3 exit velo. Uh, that hit tool definitely plays. Um, I saw him a bunch of times last spring. Uh, you can see the frame really, really filling out, the physicality really coming to form. Uh, but that hit tool, that was definitely, definitely impressive, definitely explosive and loud. Oh, yeah. He's always been a, a strong person and definitely seeing him really kind of shaping up in the mold that his body's really turned into. It's really impressive um, what's, what's going on with him. And, you know, always been an impressive hitter. We've talked about that multiple times last spring, too, just the, the effect his bat has in the lineup. So, Let's move on to the next one. We'll stay in the 2025 class here. Now we're going to a, uh, a attendee of PDG Academy down in Virginia, but a Maryland guy at heart. Let's talk about Zach Davidson. Another really impressive day, huh? Yeah, yeah. Still uncommitted. One of my former Maryland guys that moved down to Virginia at PDG Academy, but um, six foot 195, plenty of physicality there. I love the energy that he brings on both sides of the ball. Uh, when he was catching pens, he was communicating with the pitchers. Um, so I really love the energy. I love the high intent, high octane uh, actions from him. I really like the bat. He was up to 98 exit below, sprayed to all fields uh, with plenty of evident strength to the pool side. So uh, a lot to like in that bat. But like I said, I really like the actions on both sides and, and the energy and um, how he communicates with his pitchers behind the plate. Excellent. Well, let's keep on rolling on here. Another one that I want to go to, we'll stay in the 2025 class. We've got a future games alumni here from last summer. Um, really impressive player who just continues to get better. I think made a lot of strides this past summer, um, definitely in his game. Georgetown prep, pit commit, that's Will Toomey. Yeah, yeah, Will Toomey. Uh, we loved him at the future games, and, and you can really see the strength uh, starting to set into that frame. Uh, he got up to 96 exit velo. The poolside power is legit. Um, it's very consistent now. Uh, the ability to create extension through contact and, and how the hands work and the quickness and the smooth and fluid actions. Uh, Toomey is definitely on the rise. Um, like we said, we loved him at the future games, and I just love the strides that he's making, especially at the plate uh, with that hit tool. It, it's going to be something to watch this spring. Absolutely. So let's move on to our 2026 class, but let's stay at Georgetown Prep. Another young, interesting talent right here. Um, athletic frame out, out, the, out the Wahoo, you know, 6'2", 196, and that is Caleb Kearns. Um, really impressive day from him. She's got definitely got some strength at the plate. Yeah, yeah, definitely physical. We saw him at the Diamond Skills um, event that we ran a couple weeks ago. Saw him again at the Wow Factor Scout Day, and, and it's impressive. Uh, he continues to get better every time we see him. Um, I love how the hands work. It's a very strong upper body swing. Uh, once he really starts to utilize the lower half, you're going to see those power numbers really skyrocket. Um, some two-way ability there as well. He's got a low 80s fastball ability to spin. Um, so Caleb Kearns wanted to watch in that 26 class. All right, well, let's continue on now. We'll stay in the 2026 class. Got a really interesting homeschooled athlete here. Um, another one, quick speed, quick twitch. Got some pop at the plate, and that is, again, 2026 Hunter Reed. Yeah, Hunter Reed was at Catoctin last spring uh, as a freshman, and you want to talk about a physicality, uh, physical backstop, and, and that's Hunter Reed. Um, love the energy out of him as well. Really, really good kid. I communicated. I talked to him throughout the entire scout day. Um, that hit tool is still on the rise. Uh, you're going to see power numbers skyrocket uh, out of Hunter Reed. 
Um, obviously, you're going to be able to see him a lot more over the summer and the fall. But I love that hit tool. Um, I really like the actions behind the plate. And he's athletic for the size. 6'2", 210, ran a sub 4, 30-yard dash uh, home the first time. So the athleticism is there with that frame, which is definitely something to like. All right, well, let's continue on. We'll stay in the Montgomery County area. And another player who just really intriguing um, from this workout, showing some versatility uh, defensively, and that is out of Magruder High School, Jovi Silva, 2026. Yeah, yeah, you hit the you hit the nail on the head there with, with the versatility. Um, he can play outfield. He can play the middle infield. I love how the hands work, and I really, really love that left-handed swing. Uh, it's smooth. It's powerful for the size as well. Um, so you're going to see some power numbers, some sneaky pop out of them. Uh, it's a high contact rate. Uh, like I said, I just really love the versatility out of him. I can't wait to see him this spring. Not sure if he's going to play outfield, if he's going to be a middle infielder, uh, but that Magruder offense is going to be lethal, and Silva really adds his name to that list as well. Yeah, going to be a really intriguing team down there uh, this year in, in Montgomery County. So let's stay with that 2026 class. Let's go to the opposite end of the state, and let's head up to the, the northeast part at Northeast High School. Another Junior Future Games alum um, just continues to get better. Um, I know we had talked about it, and you had said you know a lot, a lot of those same things, um, really continuing to get better as a two-way player, and that is Jaden Cerullo. Yeah, yeah, Jaden Sorallo, you're going to see him impact the game on both sides of the ball. Uh, you're waiting on that frame to really fill out, uh, but the strength is there. Um, it's proportional strength throughout, strong lower half. I like the the, the BP rounds uh, to start his day. Uh, the pool side strength is there. Got a little bit of juice to the, to the alleys. Um, but when I saw him last spring, I really liked how the hands worked. The hands are a little more calm, a little more smooth, a little more fluid now. Um, so I'm really intrigued to see that hit tool this spring as well. And then on the bump, love the feel for spin. Um, can really spin it for strikes. Fastball is still uh, waiting on that uptick, uh, but you st see a little bit of it now. Uh, but like I said, that spin is lethal. Um, he attacks hitters with confidence. You're going to see that spin really play well off the fastball. Can't wait to see him on both sides of the ball this spring. Yeah, and you definitely you see that pitchability with him too. That's going to be a big, a big help, especially in that very competitive UC BAC um, conference uh, up there with with Northeast and all those guys up there. So definitely having that pitchability, I think you're definitely going to see some good things um, for him. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get quite a few innings um, this spring. But I've been wrong before. All right, let's stay on and let's go to the western part of Maryland. Let's go to Urbana High School. Um, really interesting talent here, uh, wiry, twitchy, a lot of stuff to like. There's some, um, there's definitely something there to uh, to be interested in, and that is 2026 Caden Lipscomb. Yeah, strong blood, uh, strong bloodlines for sure. Um, this was my first real look at him. Really love the defensive actions as well. He can definitely pick it up the middle. Um, there's some two way there as well, uh, but I love the hit tool. Hit tool, it's very smooth, fluid, it's calm, it's controlled, uh, really pounds the middle. He can spray line drives to all fields. You're going to see him really skyrocket once you uh, see the frame uh, fill out, add some strength. He's still young, uh, but I love the tools, love the hit tool, uh, hands work as well. So Caden Lipscomb definitely won to circle in that 26 class. Yeah, we say strong bloodlines. Uh, older brother Trey Lipscomb played there, played uh, – Major college, major Division One college baseball moved on and played in the SEC as well. So uh, definitely some good, some good there. Um, continuing on with the scout day, let's go again with our 2026 class. But we're going to head down to Montgomery Blair. Um, really interesting mound prospect here, Jamie, and that's going to be out of this 2026 Desmond Yanes. Yeah, my first look at Yanes. I've heard a bunch about him before the scout day. Uh, and I really liked what I saw on both sides of the ball. Um, 6'2", 180, so plenty to dream on in that frame. 22.7 IVB on a high fat, high 70s fastball. You're going to see an uptick in the velo. You can see it in the frame. You can see it in the arm action. Um, there's a little bit of controlled intent on the bump, so a lot to like there. Uh, and then the stick. Hit tool plays, uh, can spray line drives to all fields. Uh, plenty of strength to the pool side with that frame, so – Another guy, yet another guy to circle in that 26th class in Maryland that 
continues to get deeper and deeper. It seems like every weekend that we run events, uh, we run into another guy that I fall in love with. So uh, that 26 class is extremely deep. Well, you know, too, and we talk about this, you know, when people are asking, especially when we talk about rankings, I'm going on to the side real quick before we finish up with MoCo, but you know, this is basically kind of that definition of why we start out with those freshman classes and they're smaller and we build them up and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, we want this, we want to be able to see as many players as possible, not just list out guys, um, you know, based off the different intangibles, we want to be able to see these players and have our rankings grow as we get to see these players develop. This is a perfect example from this past weekend. Um, Giannis really like the delivery, compact, like the build, like the durable frame. There's a lot of stuff to like there uh, to definitely uh, be interested in and definitely keep an eye on, on that young man um, as he continues to develop. Let's wrap it up here with our coverage of the scout day we're going to stay with our 2026 class though and we're going to go back to magruder so we let off with magruder we're going to end with magruder um uh, really interesting talent here definitely has added some strength very athletic and that is matt strahan yeah yeah that was the first thing that that kind of uh was brought to my attention was the added strength in that frame uh we've always known about the quick twitch uh very quick very fast on both sides of the ball uh, but that hit tool is way more consistent now, way more powerful than what we've ever seen. Uh, I really like the development in the hands, uh, smooth back load, hands come through quick. Um, the ability to spray line drives to the middle with a consistent uh, basis, on a consistent basis, I really, really liked it. You love that speed factor as well. And it's another guy to circle in that 26 class and a guy uh, to see at Magruder on that uh, very standout team offensively for sure. All right. Now, let's go to the nightcap that evening on Saturday. We had a late afternoon event. Um, both of our preseason All-States sold out, and we ended up adding an extra session. We were able to get about 20 kids to come in. Honestly, that event was up for like a week and a half, two weeks, so really great turnout for um, something that wasn't really out very long but we had a really interesting turnout at this Maryland preseason All-State MoCo Montgomery County. And we're going to talk about, again, some big winners from, from this weekend. Now, obviously, just like with the scout day, if we're just going to be talking about kind of some big winners here, but there's definitely a lot more that we highlight. Jamie highlights online, prepbaseballreport.com slash Maryland. We've got superlatives. We've got quick hitters. Um, video stats, everything, all of that's going already up on the site, um, rolling out continuously. So make sure you're visiting the site, you're checking it out there so you can see everything um, as it comes up. But let's highlight a few players from this past weekend at the preseason All-State MoCo, Jamie. want to start out with a really interesting arm prospect, long, lanky, showed some feel for the zone, somebody that I know that you came away with really impressed with, and that is uh, William Heiss out of Damascus. Yeah, yeah, it was probably one of the more in, impressive bullpens uh, that we saw at the event. Uh, there's some added strength there to the 6'2", 190, uh, as well as some uptick in the velo. He was 83, 85. You're going to see him live in the mid-80s this spring. Uh, had some feel for spin as well. I like how the, the operation is. It's pretty smooth. It's controlled. Um, there's some intent there as well. Plenty to dream on in that body, 6'2", 190. Uh, so William Hayes, definitely a big winner coming out of MoCo. Yeah, definitely. Another one, it's it's funny, you know, you really saw another really nice compact frame, quick, quick arm, the way it worked, good body, um, and especially be interesting to see with a nice jump already um, and always on a traditionally competitive, very good Damascus roster. So be excited to see him again. Speaking of Damascus, let's, let's talk about one of his teammates. We'll stick with the 25 class. Um, another interesting athlete who's really shown a lot of progression um, offensively, and that is 2025 Cameron Wilderberg. Wilberding, yeah. I'm sorry, Cameron, I butcher your name every time. I don't know why. Cameron Wilberding. Yeah, yeah, really like this BP. Um, it was very consistent, very fluid. I like the strength of both gaps. Um, there's a lot of guys, especially in, in the younger classes, where you see a lot of pool size, pool size strength. Uh, Will Birding showed it to both gaps, and there's a lot of carry to both gaps as well. Six foot, 175, a lot to dream on there. Plenty of athleticism. 
uh, plenty of barrel whip through the zone as well. One of the top BP rounds that I saw on the day um, and definitely stuck out to me. All right. Well, let's stay with this MoCo event. We'll stay in the 2025 class. Let's go to Thomas Wooten. Really another one who had very, very interesting day and in showing that strength continuing to get better. And that is 2025 Jack Kearns. Yeah, Jack Kearns. You want to talk about strong uh, projection in the frame, 6'1", 195. I was talking to Cole Ledger, our, our Eastern Shore uh, scout, and he was out at a game at Dory, one of our tournaments last uh, summer down in Virginia, and Jack Kearns put a ball into the parking lot at Dory. Um, so it was kind of fun to watch him in a showcase atmosphere, uh, but that was a very, very loud BP round, 95.7 exit below. Uh, so a lot to like there, a lot of strength, um, and definitely one that I'm going to go out and see this spring. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you can definitely see that whip at the end of the swing. Something really, really interesting to uh, to definitely follow. Let's stay again with the 2025 class. Let's go to Reservoir High School over in neighboring Howard County. A really interesting two-way talent. Um, high octane, one of the words, big words that you used on this young man, and that is Matthew Russell. Yeah, Matthew Russell out of Reservoir. Uh, definitely a true two-way guy um, that I've already circled that I'm going to go out and see this spring. That's a very talented reservoir team. Um, that's a little under the radar right now, uh, but I really like Matthew Russell. I love the hit tool. Uh, there's plenty of intent there. Like, I, like you said, high octane, uh, which is one of my favorite words, but um, true two way. He was up to 83 on the bump athletic mover, uh, like the arm action as well. So something to dream on there uh, with the frame as it fills out as well. All right. Well, let's wrap up our, um, our MoCo coverage from this past Saturday. And let's stay in Howard County, but we'll go to Appleton High School. Left-handed pitcher here, very interesting athlete. I use that word a ton, but it's it's very true, interesting. Um, a, deceptive, a deceptive arm right here that's got some sneaky V-load, definitely probably is going to have more in the tank. 2026 Linus Burns. Yeah, definitely agree. It's it's sneaky velo, uh, deceptive velo as well. Deceptive arm slot, uh, low 80s. Love the feel for the slider. Um, he can definitely spin it towards the towards the bottom portion of the zone. Uh, six one 185. Some still room to fill out. Uh, room to add some strength there as well. So another bullpen that definitely opened my eyes um, along with Ace. Uh, but Linus Burns definitely a winner coming out of that event. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up our Saturday coverage and review from the Maryland preseason All-State MoCo and our scout day over at uh, Wow Factor. Let's move on to Sunday. And Jamie, this was a really, really full of talent event. Um, just really sneaky, impressive what we got to see. I know during the event you walked up and we're like, man, I can't tell if we're at a pro case or not. There's so many good numbers right here. And it truly was. Just some. Let's just throw some numbers at you real quick to talk about some of the these players. Twelve arms over eighty miles an hour. Fifteen arm velos, outfield arm velos over eighty. We had three max exit velocities over one hundred and one. Ten ninety five or better, and then twenty three of the players um, were over ninety miles an hour or better. So a really really good event, and let's get right into it and start talking about some of these guys and we'll start very quickly let's go to the mound because there was an interesting talent out of john carroll school um really intriguing here and i'm gonna i want to turn it over to you but i was impressed with this with this young man and that's 2026 pierce quinn yeah uh we've heard a bunch about pierce quinn and, and we've seen him over the years and the biggest thing we were waiting on was is the feel for the zone going to be there um you know, the, the feel for all the pitches, especially the secondary. Um, and we saw it uh, at that event on Sunday. The fastball has plenty of ride through. The breaker is a hard downer curveball up to 2,900 spin. Uh, definitely a swing and miss pitch. I cannot wait to see him this spring. I love the frame, six foot 195, plenty of strength to still be added. Um, definitely an interesting arm uh, this spring to circle. And then the bat, well, up to 94.7 exit below. It's a strong bat, strong swing. Hands are strong, creates some extension to the pool side. Um, so Pierce Quinn, definitely one um, that's at the top of my list, especially uncommitted-wise, that I'm going to go out and see this spring. 
You know, one of the things that really interested me with Pierce is he's one of those type of arms to me, like he can get away. He can get away with just his pure stuff. He can get away with making some pitches, maybe missing a little bit. Cause you were talking about, you know, they were waiting for the, the, the command and everything to really hone in. And, you know, he's one of those type of arms. Like you can just basically, Hey, all right, I'm just gunning right down the middle and I'm just going to let my movement, I'm going to let everything else do the, do the work for me. And I think he's definitely one of those guys who can, who falls into that category. Cause that breaking ball is for real. I mean, you saw it, it looks good on video. You watch it in person. It is legit. It's true 12, six and it's got, it, it falls off the table. So just really, really interesting arm right there. I'm very, um, very intrigued just like you are to watch him and see him this spring. Let's stay with another high thrower, really good two way day. Honestly, too. I thought one was one of the big, the big winners from, from the event. And let's go over to Archbishop Curley. Frostburg commit, I think they got a good one here, and that's 2024 Hunter Lahue. Yeah, yeah, they definitely got a good one here. Um, I don't know which one I like more, whether I like the bat or I like the arm better, uh, because it was that impressive on both sides throughout the day. Uh, he was up to 89 on the bump, showed some feel for the spin, electric, high motor guy, high intent. Uh, there's plenty to like. Very, very good kid. I was talking to him throughout the day. Um, High, uh, like I said, high motor, high work ethic as well. Uh, but that swing is absolutely legit. Uh, there's plenty of intent there, plenty of barrel awareness, um, plenty to like on both sides of the ball. Hunter Leigh, who I can sit here and talk about him for 20 minutes because I love him so much, along with Pierce Quinn on the bump. Um, but definitely an arm to see um, and a bat to see as well down there at Curly. Um, and Frostburg definitely got a good one, like you said. Oh, for sure. And, I mean, that's definitely – you saw that. And I mean, honestly, when we were talking about the MIA coming up in the spring season, you know, one of the things that at least I was trying, I was really thinking about was, you know, is Curly going to have the arms that are going to win the games this year? Because, you know, we didn't, we weren't 100% sure. Watching him just there, I know it's just one little bullpen, but it definitely gives you a ton of reason to be excited about what the future lies. Um, definitely going to win them some games this year. Um, and that's Hunter Lahue. Let's stay in the 24 class. We got a very interesting future JUCO player right here. You're going to Frederick Douglass, um, but he's going. He's a Frederick Community College uh, commit. He's been to multiple events, Jamie. We've always been a fan, and he just continues to trend in the right direction. And that is uh, Jamin Dick. Just a really good day, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, love that bullpen. He actually started it all for us. I think it was yeah. it was the first bullpen on my side. Uh, 85, 87, touch 88 as the first bullpen that we saw on the day. And and I was like, okay, this is going to be a good one. Um, shorter arm action, really like how clean it is. Um, love the movements. Athletic mover as well. Shorter slider for Ks. Um, so has some feel for the secondary in the zone. But that fastball came out of the hand very well. Eight, like I said, 85, 87, touch 88. I think you're going to see him grab a 90, 91 this spring as well. Um, so an arm out of Frederick Douglass. Um, out there that, uh, you know, we don't see a lot of guys out of Frederick Douglass, but but Javon Dick definitely won to circle out there uh, for this spring coming up. No, for sure. And you know what? We've been talking about a lot of good power arms. Let's stick with it for just another one at least. Uh, definitely, again, really, really impressive day. But let's stick with the arm talent that we got to see from this weekend. And let's go to a Pennsylvania commit out of Walt Whitman High School, Wells Twining. Jamie, it had been a while since we got to really see him in person. He did not disappoint whatsoever. Nope, definitely didn't disappoint. One of my favorite arms from last spring. Um, this is a guy that will uh, strike a hitter all, strike a hitter out and tell him that he struck him out. Um, so I love the competitiveness there. I love the fiery actions. Um, but it's smooth, 6'6", 180, plenty to dream on there. Um, and it's still pretty lanky. So once he really adds strength to the lower half, you're going to see that velo continue to climb. Um, this is another guy that I see being into the low 90s this spring. Um, there's just still so much to like there. I love the slider. I love the feel for the zone with the fastball slider. They play off of each other very, very well. Um, the changeup also was one of the better secondary pitches that I saw in the day. Plenty of late fade there. Um, so that's a strong, strong three-way or three pitch mix um, that I can't wait to see this spring. Like I said, one of my favorite arms to watch last year and and I can't wait to see him again. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, definitely like, 
he's one of those guys you, you know there's there's some more uptick coming and even if it doesn't happen in the spring where he gets up i i would be shocked if you know he's definitely not a name once he's in college um and just continues to add to that add to the strength and everything like that i, I definitely wouldn't be shocked to to hear low mid 90s coming out of that arm you know the sky's the limit just got to keep on working at it so um so yeah definitely a really good day from wells Let's go to the 2026 class here with this this young man um, going to Arundel County. Well, let's go to Severna Park High School, a guy who really, really impressed. Kind of one of the first times we really had good, good eyes on him. You know, you call you called it, Jamie, eye opening um, was this type of an event or this type of workout and performance. And that's going to be out of 2026. Eric Benner. Yeah. Yeah. When I was looking at. uh the the stats post event and looking at a bunch of the videos eric benner really stood out to me um he was on the other mound so i wasn't able to see too too much live um but when i saw the video it, it was extremely impressive um stayed low in the zone um could work both sides of the plate with the fastball uh fastball got up to 85 out of that frame was which was very um intriguing uh and and that's another arm out of severna park they they continue to to grow talent out there um, I just love the feel for the zone. Eric Benner, a guy to circle, um, smooth operator. Uh, so definitely one that, that caught my eye and, and definitely a big winner from that event. Yeah, definitely just adding to a, another sneaky, impressive staff that Coach Milton's going to be dealing with over at Severna Park. So definitely one to keep tabs on. Now let's go to another committed player um, that we've got to see. Um, you know, we, we've talked about at length. Um, one of my favorite players in, in the state, you know, and we've we've got to see this young man since the junior future games way back when he was, I think when he was 13 years old going into the eighth grade, we've got to start seeing him and you knew something was special there. It seems like it's really progressing well, getting into his junior campaign. Let's go to Longreach High School, um, NC State commit Aiden West. Yeah, we we finally get to talk about some bats um, at the event, and and like you were saying earlier, I pulled you over and I said, look, I said these numbers are crazy coming off track, man. I said, is this a pro case? Because and and it was serious with with the numbers that were coming out, um, and Aiden West was a part of it. it it's our first look at him uh, in a while since last spring. It's smooth, it's fluid. Uh, the strength in the hands continue to increase. One hundred two point four event best exit velo. Uh, it's just a smooth operator. I love how the hands work. I love the balance at the plate as well. He doesn't get kind of out of body uh, with the swing. He stays controlled. It stays smooth, uh, stays fluid. Um, and obviously he can definitely pick it up the middle. So Aiden West, uh, he's number one in that class for a reason. Um, and he really solidified his spot at that event. Yeah, for sure. I mean, being a left-handed hitter obviously adds a little bit more value you know, the whole you're facing more right handed arms. You get a different view that slider is going to be coming into you as opposed to going away from you as a lefty. So that's obviously the one of the, the big things. But being able to play shortstop, um, not sure if he's going to stick there at the next level. I wouldn't be shocked if he does. I think he absolutely can. But he's got, you know, tremendous athleticism, can move around, can play multiple positions. I don't think it'll be a problem, but I think that bat's going to play, man. Um, you know, it's just hard to teach that bat to ball skill. Um, that barrel control that he has, and he just has that ability to get the fat part of the barrel on the baseball and a lot of swings. So it's just a lot of fun to watch, um, and, and this weekend was no different. So let's keep on going. Let's go to the 2025 class again, and let's go to Archbishop Spalding High School, another really interesting player here, uh, high octane, you, if you will. Um, good speed, good arm, really impressive BP, and that is 2025 Jacob Ruiz. Yeah, yeah. Jacob Ruiz, uh, he encompasses uh, my favorite word or my favorite phrase, and that's high octane. Uh, 379, home to first time, was 90 from the outfield as well. Uh, some quick twitch on both sides of the ball. I love how the feet work defensively and the swing impressed. Um, we saw it last winter where it was a little out of control. Um, but this time you, you saw a little bit more smooth. You saw some fluid actions. He gets plenty of lift through contact. The strength to the middle is there. It's present. Um, and, and you see some strength in that frame as well that, that's really gotten to build up. Uh, so Jacob Ruiz, a very, very strong outing at that showcase. Um, and I can't wait to see him this spring. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go to a 2026 right here who staying at Archbishop Spalding High School, I thought was uh, another, this was a really impressive, really impressive individual, really impressive workout. Um, one, one of the, the bigger, bigger, big winners, if that's an, if that actually makes sense, but it just, we hadn't really had the opportunity to see this young man that much. And he came out and came out with authority. So uh, be very interesting to watch this one this spring, but I want to turn it over to you. Let's talk about 2026, Michael Thompson. Yeah, Michael Thompson. I put in my notes, uh, love, love, love. Um, this was probably one of my dark horses coming in. I couldn't wait to see him, and he did not disappoint at all. Uh, I really love the swing, love the operation. It's very smooth. It's fluid, stays back on the back leg very well. Um, and there's some there's some advanced strength in that frame as well. He's 5'11", 190 as a 26, so plenty to like there, plenty to dream on. Uh, but like I said, it was a very consistent BP round, very strong on both sides of the ball. Um, and that strength is evident um, in that swing. So so one guy as well in that 26 class that we can talk about, that 26 class is loaded, um, and Michael Thompson adds his, adds his name to that list. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, you know, you, you get to see that that type of strength. It's pretty simple, easy, easy swing, easy power that he can generate to um, be a lot of fun to keep an eye on to watch. Speaking of pop, let's go with the 2025 that we've had plenty of, of times to get to see and just really enjoy watching hit. Um, obviously, I love all, all aspects of the game, but let's let's go to Bethesda Chevy Chase. Um, really nice hitter in this 2025 class, and that's Trent Lopez. Yeah, Trent Lopez. You always wonder in these showcases how the swing in BP uh, can transfer to a game, and and Trent Lopez kind of encompasses that. Like the swing absolutely transfers to a game. The strength continues to be added to the frame. Uh, the hands are extremely strong. The pull side power is there, and we saw last spring his ability to backspin to the to the opposite field gap as well. So it's a whole field approach. It's a controlled approach, up to 101.8 exit velo. So it's very easy. It's very fluid, and the ball explodes off the barrel. So Trent Lopez won to circle in that class. Oh, absolutely. And another one that, you know, is going to be a lot of fun to watch this spring. Let's go back to Archbishop Spalding High School. Um, another young man that we've had the opportunity to watch through uh, multiple years. We got to see him at our Junior Future Games when he was uh, just going into the eighth eighth grade. And I like Jamie, I had to do a double take when I took a look at him because I was like, what in the world, man? It's, it, had been, it had been a while since I got to see him. But another Really impressive day. Um, obviously, he has checks two two big boxes off of mine. Um, good offensive hitting catcher, a left-handed hitter, and that's going to be 2026 Cruz Luna. Yeah, Cruz Luna. Looking at the roster prior to the event, Cruz Luna is definitely one that I circled, uh, one that intrigued me the most coming out to this event to see. Uh, that swing was lethal. It was powerful. Uh, it was strong. The ability to backspin to both gaps was there. It was evident. It was consistent. Uh, the power to the pool side is also increasing. Um, love the intent. It's it's a controlled operation. The hands are quick, strong. Um, so really like that hit tool. We'll see where he plays uh, this spring for Spalding because you're going to need to get that bat in the lineup. Um, they have a lot of catcher depth uh, down there at Spalding, so we'll see if he gets some time behind the plate. May see him in the corner outfield spot to show off some versatility and some athleticism. But Cruz Luna, that bat definitely impressed. 95.9 exit velo. Uh, so you see the, the the strength in the barrel, the strength in the frame as well. And like you said, it was it was kind of tough to, to recognize him um, because of, of how that body has transformed. So Cruz Luna, really, really good day. Oh, well, you know, too, that's just because I'm super old now and I can't remember what I did yesterday, let alone like five minutes ago. Um, but, you know, he has definitely gotten bigger, gotten stronger. So all all good things for Cruz. So let's uh, stay in the MIA here. Let's go up north um, to John Carroll and another committed player here. We've got to see um, 2026 Miguel Leon and, you know, Jamie, um, Miggy, we've again, we've got to see him for a while now and just watching him continue to get better and better and better. You know, I really like the trajectory that this young man is showing both offensively and defensively. I think we're moving in the right direction, but uh, it was a really, really nice day for Miggy. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. Um, every time we see him, you can, you, you see the, the strides that he's making in the game. 
Uh, he continues to get better. Uh, the ability to create backspin to the pool side was impressive on that day. It was a consistent couple rounds that he took, very loud, uh, on barrel consistently, like how the hands work, really sinks into the back hip well as, uh, um, as well, continued to impress, uh, really like that hit tool, and the ability to impact on both sides of the ball. He can play a couple different positions. He can play outfield at John Carroll. Uh, we know that he can pick it at shortstop as well. So there's some versatility defensively. Uh, we'll see where he's at uh, in a loaded position group at John Carroll. Uh, but I think you're going to see you're going to see Miggy in that lineup, um, and I can't wait to see uh, that lethal lineup in the MIA. Yeah, for sure. It's a good problem to have is that much depth they're going to have this year offensively. So um, definitely just adding another piece to the puzzle uh, up there for the Patriots. Speaking of which, let's let's stay with John Carroll. And let's stay with another teammate of his. Um, a year older, 2025 class. Um, again, I talk about traje trajectory and, and moving in the right direction, and and that definitely falls into the category for this next young man. UNCW commit, really good day offensively. I just just really, really pleased with um, how he is progressing, and that is Casey Carpenter. Yeah, yeah, Casey Carpenter. What I liked the most was was kind of the change in the hands. You, you can see um, – in, in previous videos, when we saw him at the future games, the hands were kind of set higher. He's got the hands set a little lower now um, and allows the barrel to, to kind of whip a little bit better through the zone. Um, the strength is obviously to the pull side. We've seen that consistently in the past, but uh, up to 101 exit velo, the strength is continuing to be added to the frame. Uh, we like the defensive actions um, as well. Quick footwork, smooth hands. Uh, so Casey Carpenter, strong day. We knew that he was going to perform when, when we saw his name on that roster uh, previous to the event, um, and he definitely didn't disappoint. No, that is for sure. That is for sure. And let's uh, let's move on now. Let's go down to St. Paul's School and a really, really interesting uh, – I say, I say interesting because I apparently love using the word, but uh, that's the wrong word for this one because he's just – he's one of – again, one of my more favorite players around the state – um, left-handed hitter. So obviously I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I love myself some left-handed hitting prospects. Um, you know, I'm going to give a little story before we start. I remember seeing him when he's coming in as a freshman that summer before junior future games, we were playing, I believe it was Kentucky and they had a really hard throwing right-handed arms, like 86, 87, sniffing 88. And I, it was within like the first three pitches of his at bat, just nice, smooth, double in the gap, and just absolutely jumped on it. Then faced the lefty, who was another 84 to 86 guy, didn't phase him what so bit, showed some definite maturity at the plate. And I've been kind of sold ever since. And nothing, to, it didn't disappoint today. That's again getting to watch the, the, the workout from young Eli Livingston. Yeah, number 126 in the class. And uh, kind of like Aiden, he, he kind of solidified his spot in that class. Um, very, very impressive day. Love the the added barrel awareness, um, at, at least in my eyes. Uh, the strength to the pull side was legit. Um, it was a very advanced approach. He's very mature at the plate, um, kind of doubling down on what you were saying. But uh, plenty of whip in the barrel, strong hands, quick hands. Um, so, like I said, he didn't disappoint. We didn't think he was going to disappoint, but definitely one coming in that I wanted to circle, wanted to really pay attention to, to see how that, how the work ethic was on the back end going through the winter uh, since our last look, and definitely didn't disappoint. So, so one that continues to tick up and, and trend in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it seems like it's going to be a pretty interesting team there at uh, St. Paul's this year. They've got some nice young talent um, in the B conference there in the MIAA. So it should be a lot of fun to keep track of uh, of them and see how how they continue to um, continue to progress. So we've got two more players that we want to talk before we wrap things up. Let's go back to John Carroll real quick here. Um, 2025, really interesting uh, offensive talent. Uh, showed some a high exit velo up to 97.4. Um, Jamie, I know one that you really enjoyed watching today, and that is Andrew Jordan. Yeah, yeah, with all the talent that was there, all the committed guys, all the talent throughout, um, Andrew Jordan kind of stood out to me as, as one of the top AP rounds uh, that I saw. I uh, really like how the hands work. This is a swing that uh, you see in the BP, and you're like, does that transfer in game? And it definitely does. Uh, I saw him a bunch last spring. 
Um, Andrew Jordan, the strength to the middle, strength to the gaps is legit. It's consistent. It's evident. Um, another guy that I can't wait to see this spring. Uh, the added strength to the frame is is going to take his game to new levels. Um, so Andrew Jordan, one of my favorite BP rounds um, and one of my favorite guys, uncommitted guys um, this spring down there, John at uh, John Carroll, uh, that I can't wait to see. All right, so let's wrap things up here. Last player we're going to talk about, but definitely another one who was one of the big winners from that weekend, um, Jamie. You have you wrote down in your notes. You talked about him too. Just another one that you really really liked from Sunday's workout. That's 2025 Chase Bandy out of Archbishop Curley. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, in my notes, I put one of my favorites. But this was this was a huge winner on the day. Didn't know too too much about him coming into the event, uh, but that BP round was legit. Um, it was very consistent, very smooth, very strong. Um, you can tell the strength in the hands. It's evident. It, it's consistent. Uh, the ability to backspin to the middle is there. Um, I really like how the hands work. There's plenty of rhythm there. Ball jumps to the middle. Uh, line drive tendencies to chase Bandy. One to circle. Like I said, didn't know too, too much about him coming into the event, um, but definitely opened my eyes throughout. And that BP round uh, was very, very legit, very consistent, um, and very advanced in my eyes. All righty. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. A lot to talk about, but there was a lot of players that we got to see over the weekend, Jamie. So um, take a quick nap, gather your gather yourself because we got to do it again this weekend. Uh, we got another two events, one in Maryland, one in Delaware, um, Delaware preseason all state. The first uh, first time in a long time that we've ran a winter preseason event in the state of Delaware. It's looking to be a really good one. Really excited for that. But Next episode, next time you see us um, on one of our extended extended episodes is going to be that review from that past weekend. We got a scout day down in in the shore with the East Coast uh, Royals, and then um, then we've got the Delaware preseason all states. So two things that we will talk about next week on that episode. So there'll be another. I'm sure there'll be a, another load of talent that we'll be able to talk about and break down um, from this upcoming weekend. So. Jamie, before I, before we head out, any words of wisdom? Words of wisdom. Uh, jump up on the website. See all the stories that are coming out. Uh, quick hit superlatives. Um, we're throwing out a bunch of video, um, post-event stuff. Please get on the website. Take a look at it. Social media, Twitter, Instagram. There's a lot of stuff spewing out there. Um, a lot of really, really good stuff, intriguing stuff, and and. Baseball continues to climb in Maryland. I love it. Uh, I talk uh, to a lot of coaches about it. Um, the baseball is definitely trending in the right direction. Um, and Maryland's in good hands with the talent that's, that's across the old line state in Delaware. So uh, words of wisdom, I'm not sure if that was wisdom. Um, but just throw a couple of bats out there and, and a little bit of uh, my thoughts. So a lot of things to like. Um, super excited for it. And, and spring is right around the corner. Uh, so can't wait to get out there. Yeah, yeah, going to be a lot of fun, a lot, lot of good, good games that are going to be going on this spring. Um, again, just a reminder for everyone, make sure you stay tuned at some point later on. We're going to do a release just to show, um, just again, to talk about our future games, what to expect and everything like that, um, you know, with with the new teams, with the format change that we've been doing to one of the, one of the best events in the country, how we're making it even better, um, and how you'd be able to qualify for that to help represent uh, team Maryland, Delaware, um, for that event. So without further ado, I am Jerry Shank for Jamie Nail. It's Crab Cakes and Baseball because that's what Prep Baseball Maryland does. Thanks all. Thank you all for listening. We'll talk to you soon.